Hello, mm. hope you're good. Thank you for uh, checking us out. Mm. Um, we've got about, what, 10 out. seconds to draw you in. So um, what I'm going to say is that uh, Mike's going to tell you a really funny story. Again? This one, again. No pressure. Don't even know what it is, but he's going to tell you. Should I? <laughs> Which one should I do? <laughs> should I do one? Do you know, all I'm going to say is we've had requests for the old podcast to come back. I'm throwing it out there now. Yeah? I've had requests from people who said, yes, they want to t- us to turn these into actual podcasts. Mm-hmm. So I've got to find the, the Podbean password because I can't find it anyway. I've forgotten it. Okay. So we need to figure I, that out. I know what it'll be. Or no, I tried, derivative. I tried that. Really? It's not that one. So okay. we need to, I need to figure it out. Um, that's number one. Yeah. Number two is that the old stories we used to do, people want them back. So I think people we may have back. to do some sort of mixture on the podcast of, we'll put these onto the podcast. Why, can, but then, why have we not thought of that? Because, you know, reading one of those stories in real time and getting reaction, a visual reaction. Yeah. We used to do it on the podcast, which is arguably harder to get across the yeah. hilarity. Just people are saying that they're they're disappointed that they're no longer spilling their coffee through their nose as they're walking to work laughing. Let me see much. if I can find, uh, you do the intro. Let me just see yeah. if you can find one. We've done a mic. We're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. Um, just taking you through the pitfalls, the things that we've done right, things that we've done wrong. Um, just giving you our general advice. Um, because generally the advice in this space is pretty shit and shoddy and people just tell you what... Um, what they think is right and they're speaking absolutes the whole time and we're just here to give you some general advice because we think there are certain ways of doing this. Um, so yeah, if you don't know much about who we are, how we form what we did, I'm going to stop knocking that. Um, go watch our video last week which is all about how we form my sister. I mean, it's a long one, so... Um, that's that's if it's done in order though, isn't it? They're always in order, mate. Is I, it always, I always in order? Do them order? I do them in order for that very reason. Okay. Um, he does them in order. So what, today... Week? Every, every, every week, week. Every, every week. Every week. So today, um, we are going to talk about um, not um, having knee-jerk reactions to things and not changing things just because you think one post hasn't worked or one week hasn't worked or, or whatever. A lot of coaches make these quick snap decisions based on a very, very small sample size of data. Uh, and we don't think that's always the best way to go about things. And also talk about the pitfalls and the perils of being self-employed uh, as an online coach and things like that. And, and some of the the things you have to deal with, um, you know, for example, when clients drop off again and people make knee-jerk reactions, they think they have to change something and, and, and things like that. And often that's not the case. It's um, it's just a case of sticking to the strategy. Because again, if there was secrets, if there was these things and hacks that you could get five clients in overnight, we would tell people. Of course we would. Why would we not tell people that? But that's not how it works. Um so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go into that. I think um, unless Mike finds a funny story real quick. And we'll talk yeah, about I mean we've we've got some, um, but I think we've done most we've of done, them. This is the other thing, right? Is that with these funny news articles, is that you go into the archives of like some of the best newspapers that are around Sunday Sport, for example, um, and you bring up all these funny stories. We used to have, we used to have websites used to have these funny stories and, and things yeah. that actually happen with people. Like my personal favorite was. Um, the one where there was a vicar yeah. who fell potato. onto a potato and it got um, it got it got lodged up his rectum, yeah. um, and he claimed on the story that he was putting up his kitchen curtains um, naked uh, as as you would, and then fell on a potato, and um, yeah, I don't know how anyone believed them uh, when he went to hospital, but that was the story he gave, <laughs> yeah, um, which we found quite funny. But yeah, we used to basically find hilarious news stories and basically read out the story. And what happened on them? Um, and people used to quite enjoy our commentary on the uh, on the, the news articles. That was yeah, what we used to I mean, do on I've, I've, got, I've got one here. Uh, is it up to the same standard as the others? I don't know. Doubtful. Um, There's also the man that sucked off a dog for a packet of quavers. Packet of quavers, yeah. That was a, that was a good uh, that was one. A good one. Um, <laughs> Why or how, we'll never know. But. Uh, that, was, that was a good one. Tragedy as body of hide-and-seek world champion found in the <laughs> cupboard. So, you know, he won, obviously. Um, oh, God. There's just no way, there's just no way these, half these happen. But okay. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to... We'll go with the. We'll go with this one at the end. Um, I've not read it. I don't know whether it's going to be any good. Uh, is it a bit blurred? We'll save it for the end. We'll save it for the end. We'll save it for the end. Um, so, anyway... But yeah, look, I think with this, look, it's, it's tough when you're a coach and, you know, if you have a week where, for example, you lose three or four clients, it can take a bit of a, it, well, certainly your finances obviously take a hit for the month after, or it should be the month after if you set things up properly where you get people to give you a month's notice. Um, so you do have time to plan and prepare for that kind of month coming up. But we get a lot of coaches who uh, we work with on a one-to-one basis. On a, every week? Every week. Oh, we every do a, week? An update every week. Every week. Every week. Bes- we what, bespoke videos every week um, every coach? And, you know, they'll have a week where they'll lose three or four clients and they go, oh, so what's the plan then? What do you mean? 
what do you mean what's the plan yeah like the plan is to keep doing what you're doing like because mm. Why would you have done anything different before? Why would you suddenly change? You should have been working your nuts off before. Were you not working your nuts off before? Hmm. Well, yeah, I was. Okay, so why did you change anything then? People drop off. People finish coaching. They come hmm. to a natural ending point. Their finances get too tight. They're going away on holiday or they've lost their job or they've split with their partner, whatever. Shit happens and people leave. Like it's the business we're in. Part of it, I think, is get used to it step up a lip and just crack on. The other part of it is, okay, be ready for when that happens. And we've got other videos where we talk about, you know, giving yourself a salary and not getting, again, too high with the highs. And if you do have a good month financially, not just spunk all the money, save it for when you have a month where people drop off. <laughs> and again, we talked about, go find the other video. I can't remember what it was. I can't, I'm not even gonna say I'm gonna put a card up there because I'm not, because I can't remember what video it was no. in. But it's one of them. We wouldn't do it anyway. Um, and we talked about the members group anyway, extensively. So if you wanna join the members group, just join the members group. How much is it? 49 pound. Oh, cool. I went to a, get a, a month, a month, by the way, that is. Not, not a week. You get a video every week. Well, every week? <laughs> not every week. Every week. Every week. Every week. Um, <clears throat> so you, you should be setting yourself some sort of salary so that if you, let's say you set yourself your salary as 3,000, if you have a month where you make five, you don't give yourself more than that. You say, well, you're giving yourself three. Another month that's five, you give yourself three. And then you have a month you drop down to two, you still pay yourself three because you can afford to do that based on how you run the business. But anyway, um, the plan shouldn't change. You may change in terms of maybe putting out a bit more social proof. You may start posting a bit more behind the scenes on your stories of check-ins and client results and things like that. I would argue that shouldn't be the case. You should be posting that anyway, but you may have forgotten. You may have taken your eye off the ball and taken your foot off the gas, um, which again is another problem. Um, but it's, it's getting used to that and knowing that that's part and parcel of the job and that the more you overreact to those situations, the worse your decision-making becomes. If you get too emotional about your decisions, it just goes to shit. When you realise that it is part and parcel, I'm not going to ever say that it's easy, um, no. because because it because it's not being self-employed is incredibly tough. It's really really tough, uh, and I I honestly like um, you know pat anybody that tries to go self-employed on the back because not literally not literally you know um, knock them over so yeah too strong too strong uh, yeah. but I don't associate with lots of people these days um, you know. I put, I put up with you, tolerate you. Um, no, but um, I, d I do commend people for for getting self employed because because it, it is tough because you know it's a lot more stable when you are employed theoretically. Yeah, you, you say that theoretically. This is the thing theoretically, but I also think that there's almost a, an empowerment there as well, though. Yeah. Because I said this to someone the other day, it, and he was he was worried because he had three or four clients to park. I said if you're employed. You don't see that happening to a company. And any day they can just call you and yeah, you may, may be redundant because we're not getting that much money in. And that's nothing to do with you. That's nothing to do with you. That's just you doing your job for fulfillment and they've just gone, nah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Whereas you, when you're self-employed, you can foresee yeah. certain things coming. So because there's you're double-edged sword. Because you're every department, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, but it's still really hard. It's, it, really hard. it's really, really hard because, you know, you're the one who's going to motivate yourself. You're the one who's in charge of the company direction and the vision and what you produce and the quality of, of service and so on and so forth. Whereas when you're employed, all of that stuff is done, all the framework, all the structure, you're just plugged into a position basically. But so it is tough. And then you've got to think about, um, you know, if, if you have family to support, bills to pay, so on and so forth. And it, and it can be a volatile job. You know, it's never nice to lose a client, but we all lose them. Um, and then, if, then you're even thinking after that about retirement and you go, shit, like you've got to put some money away for retirement and a, and a pension and go, okay, let's say I'll live till I'm 80. And then you go, okay, well, that means I don't want to work between 60 and 80. So that means I've got to come up with 20 years worth of income to, mm. to, to save up in the bank, basically. Um, so it is tough and it is a, an anxiety provoking um, experience, I guess. And it isn't for everybody. Like it really, really isn't for everybody. Um, but... For those that it is for, you just kind of have to embrace the fact that you you might have an underlying level of anxiety at times. You might panic when you get three, four, five people drop off and it and it's dry for a couple of weeks. And this is stuff that mentors won't tell you because they want to portray that it's easy and it's all rosy. Of course they do because they want you to buy what they're selling so that you go in and go, oh shit, like it, it sounds easy in that mentorship. Then you get in and you realize it's not. Um, but it's too late. You paid thousands of pounds. Um, but um, but yeah, so it's not an easy thing to do. And we have, you know, panicked in the past. Panic to the point where you're like, oh shit, I, I need a few clients. But not panic where you completely change the whole way you do business. Um, and that's something that you have to remember is that just because you've had a couple of people drop off and you've had nobody come in doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. 
and hopefully that's a light bulb to people is that it doesn't mean anything if you've had if, if you were at 20 clients and you've dropped down to 17 it's it's impossible that what you what you were doing only got in those 20 people and that's it the internet's exhausted mm. of that way of marketing no it's not the, the same thing should be done because we spoke about this before is that the right time for you isn't necessarily the right time for your client like you need to keep putting out consistent content and and engaging with people in your in your inbox and chatting to them over the long term forever like indefinitely because at some point they will then come in and if that's being done on a kind of conveyor belt where that doesn't stop then you you're you're then in front if that makes sense and yeah you might have a couple of dry weeks but it's not to say that after that it's not going to pick up by doing the same things. Mm. But the problem is, is that people go, oh shit, I've not had any clients in, so I'm going to launch a group coaching or I'm going to launch a challenge or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that or I'm going to change this message or I'm going to change that or maybe I should focus on reels or maybe I can do that or or outreach doesn't work because I've got nobody in so I think I need to focus on something else or I think I need that. And it's, like I say, we've had anxiety and still get anxiety at times. Like, not... It, it, it is it, it's a hard 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 thing to go through but we don't change up the business model because of stuff like you still have to stick to your core traits and core values and core principles of how you're running a business and you don't let you know three four five people drop dropping off affect you you can't you can't you almost have to embrace it as part and parcel and if you realize that every single client that you've got currently will leave you at some point of course they are of course they're going to leave you at some point. So th then is it a bad thing? Yeah, look, I think the other thing with it is, um, like you just said there, the clients sign up with you when they're ready. Just because you've got four spaces, five spaces, 20 spaces, whatever it might be, doesn't mean that they're ready when you are. And I think that that's the biggest thing that I have to say to clients all the time is I say, if you did CTAs, right? Let's say you do a CTA every single week for a month. And then the next month, you don't do any CTAs. But that month before, the client wasn't ready to sign up. But this month, they are ready. They may just assume you're full. And they're going, oh, they're full now. They had all CTAs last month. Never mind. I'll just wait until the next one. And if you don't do one, like maybe the next one rolls around and they found another coach. Or they found someone else they follow. Or they found another program. And it comes back to, again, being consistent with CTAs. Like I get people, oh, I've lost a few clients. I probably should do some more CTAs. Well, not really. You should have been doing them. Regardless. Hmm two to three a week. Why are you not doing two or three a week? Like maybe one a bit harder, two a little bit softer. You know, just letting people know how they can get in touch with you. Blows my mind that c coaches are only doing CTAs for clients when they want clients. And I'm like, no, you, you should always be telling your, co your clients, your followers, how they can work with you, how to do that. Because then when they're ready, they'll be reminded every three to four days of how to do that. Mm -hmm. They're not going to turn off because you've done a few CTAs. Mm -hmm. Believe me, they're not. It's in your head it's in your head that you feel salesy it's in your head that you think everybody's looking at your content going oh they're they're posting CTAs all the time no one's doing that unless you're doing it every day like in a launch week which you have to do it every day and there's if you think about it if there's a reason why you would do a call to action on a launch week let's just say you're looking at any other company that's got a, a sale on a black friday they're, they're doing CTAs every day like and if, if you take that and go, okay, so that's the most effective way to launch something that is that you ramp up the most CTAs, then go, okay, well, why wouldn't you do a, just a slightly watered down version of that consistently throughout that's less aggressive and so on and so forth? You've been, you've been wrong. Mm. Answer it. No, it's about, it's about the car, mate. Yeah, go on. Puncture. Yeah, yeah answer it. <laughs> I'm going to answer it now on this call. He wants to, he wants to no hear one wants to hear, They can't hear it, though, can they? They just hear no, me talking. True, yeah. so, and they'll do the whole... In Dubai, you always get this, or you pick up the phone, you go, hello, and they go, hello, and you go, yeah. hello, and you go, hello again. There's like five hellos. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah, okay, yeah. and then they start speaking. Yeah. yeah that's that way. It's weird. Yeah, so let's reenact it. Hello, sir. Hello. 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 Hi. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> so your car's got a puncture. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it's weird. He's ringing me again. Um, of course he is. I like, I like. So I answer it then. He's ringing me again. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Okay. They also, they also do this other thing as well. Um, so 357. Yeah, thank you. That's his villa. Uh, he's not in if you want to go and rob it. Um, Laura's in, it's fine. Laura's in. She won't stop anybody. She's four foot three. Um, yeah. They also do this thing as well, don't they? Delivery drivers. They'll ring you. So you'll order delivery. There's a lot of delivery out here. You'll order uh, delivery and they'll ring you and go, I'm outside your villa, sir. 
yeah, knock on the door then, surely. Yeah, it's literally there. It's in the door like, you've got to come to the door with it. So I'm outside your villa. Well, just, you know, <sighs> ring the bell. But anyway, uh, we, were, we were talking about some rubbish to do with online coaching. Um, what was it? What were you talking about? I can't remember now, mate. You can't remember. You distracted me. You told me to pick up the phone. So I was well, being I all professional. It is my fault. And then, um, you know, but at least you've seen, go. you know, yeah. at least you've, it's raw. We what were talking about, um, we were talking about people not doing CTAs. Yeah, when, there you um, go. Yeah. Do more of them anyway. Let's yeah. go into this funny story. <laughs> do uh, more of them. Do more of them. <laughs> anyway, do more of them. <laughs> Definitely do more of them. But um, yeah, be consistent with it. Value. Yeah, all so about the value, aren't we? Yeah. Be consistent with it. Yeah, that's what I was saying, actually. If you do loads during a launch and you're launching something, you're pushing something, and then you you recognize, therefore, then that must be the best way to get in the most amount of people, right? If that's what you recognize. Yeah. And, and you can even do it the opposite way around and go, okay, so if you never did a CTA again, do you think you're more or less likely to get in more clients? Well, if you never did a CTA again, you're less likely, right? Mm. So then just take that data and go, okay, well, it's somewhere in between then the launch of every single day to never posting again. Yep. And it's the same again with like, um, with posting as well. I, I, say, I had to say this the other day to somebody. I'm like, okay, so if I said, you're never going to post on Instagram again, like, do you think it's going to help your business or hinder it? And the answer is obviously it's going to hinder it. So then you go, okay, so why are you only posting twice a week? Yes, it's not as extreme as never posting again, but it's still the same premise that you're still recognizing that the, the less frequently you post, the less likely you're going to get somebody in. Mm. So do the opposite of that. So it's the same with call to actions and so on and so forth. It's like find that happy medium where you are doing two or three a week where you're just prompting that this is how you get in touch and I am available to work with. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, is that someone will have been consuming your content over months and it could be that that, that, that CTA is the thing that they're just reminded them yeah to but also what. if they think you're really good which you'd like them to think they will assume you're full exactly they will assume that you don't have space for people because they may have seen previously that you did have spaces for people and i think that like like i said it's that whole thing of not having that knee-jerk reaction to what happens within your business shouldn't affect your strategy for what you do in terms of social media it just shouldn't affect it it should just be that you have a huge client drop off great if you have four clients join likewise you shouldn't drop off your content you should have a system in place whereby you know that all this stuff just naturally happens over a week. Regardless of the client numbers going to put down, your content and your strategy just stay the same, if it's working. But yeah, I, anyway, before we wrap up and go on to this, uh, to this uh, last little segment, um, it is important to know that we have dry weeks, that every coach has dry weeks, that it's not all happy, clappy, plain sailing, like a lot of mentors will tell you. Um, and it's not within their mentorships, and it's well, not within their business. So like a prime example, though, right? So you talk about the Black Friday thing, right? It's like Black Friday. When I see an advert on Black Friday for a washing machine that's half price, I don't think, oh, what are they doing? I can't believe they're advertising. I don't need a washing machine right now. So I'm not going to buy one. But if I did need a washing machine, then they've just told me that they're available. I don't want guitar lessons. Do you know, it's that whole thing of like, it, it's like, okay, but if I did want one, I'd want them to tell me it was half price. Yeah. I'd want them to tell me. Yeah. I'd want them to tell me it was available. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's that, like, it doesn't, it's not that washing machines are bad. I don't, if I signed up to a company and it was about washing machines, they sent me an email every week just to update me on what was going on. Well, yeah, I probably would unsubscribe if I was not interested in them. But if I was, like, actually in the market for one, I would be there. And I'd be like, I'm not the one for me next week. Wait for the next week. Wait for the next week. And I just think it's this whole thing of, around people don't think about their coaching as other products and other things. Like you said about Coca-Cola before. Coca-Cola don't go, oh, we've hit our target this month, this quarter. So we'll just stop all the advertising now. Just stop it all. Till next call. You, till it dips, well, well, then we'll pick it back up again. Well, no, they just they just keep it going, don't they? There's no adverts for washing machines on TV. Not on TV, there isn't, no. Why not? I don't know, mate. Probably for that reason, though. Maybe it's something that you don't need That's to be conundrum. seeing regularly. Or, <laughs> a, or any kitchen appliance. I don't know. Core what? Reason stuff used to do them. Do the they? Time. Yeah. You, have you ever seen Morphe Richards doing a kettle? I've seen people advertising kettles and washing machines. Have you? Comment below if you've ever seen people advertise washing machines and kettles. I have. Have you? I've fridge? seen TV adverts. You ever seen a TV advert advertise your fridge? No, not no. as in like, yeah, but no. not as in like. You'll have curries. Yeah, yeah. But you will not have, so, you know, for an actual washing Samsung machine. Samsung doing, this is a new fridge, you know, like no. that. No. You don't see them. What? I wonder why. No, but you do see the curries ones though. You do see curries, but that's, a, that's but stocking that's a, all of them. That's the department store. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Anyway. So this is the, uh, if, if you're not aware of what the old podcast was, the old po podcast was f like fitness at the beginning. It was a funny story at the back end. So it was like um, biceps end. and banter. So maybe we'll do one now. Because um, we did one about me uh, weeing all over myself in the <laughs> Um So <clears throat> is this the weirdest man in Britain? Question mark. Who knows? 
Yeah. We'll see. Not in Britain, but yeah. Rushed to A&E with his todger stuck in a Nat West pig. <laughs> so... Um, the little know. ones. And there's a the proof. So... <laughs> There's the, there's a the proof. His little face. No, uh, yeah, he's a little. He is a little like. Did you ever watch? Um, <laughs> Looks like little Miss Piggy, but in a, like a, in a. Have you seen his face though? Me. Oh, his face. No, I seen yeah, his look face. at his face. He looks like someone who would <laughs> seen us in a in a thingy, doesn't he? Yeah. Anyway. Looks like he's got more than one of them at home as well. So, uh, medics see some strange things in any departments. Damn right they do. After what we've been talking about before. Um, but few can claim to have in- encountered a man steaming into a triage with a ceramic NatWest piggy bank stuck to his bell end. <laughs> Good journalism. Um, literally uses the word uh, bell end. This is Nick Appleyard, by the way, <laughs> of uh, the Sunday Sport. Um, highbrow journalism. Highbrow, yeah. yeah. I think it's a broadsheet. Oh, it is um, broadsheet. It is broadsheet, yeah. yeah. It has to be to fit all the women on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, Steve Harris was that man on Thursday night. Would name him. Why would you name him? Uh, Why would he let himself in? Yeah, see, surname as well. Uh, the hapless bachelor had inserted Shock. his willy into the ceramic pig, one of a collection of five given away to, the, to young NatWest customers in the 1980s because he just wondered what it would feel like. <laughs> I've often thought that, though, yeah. when I've seen a piggy bank. Yeah, yeah. I always think, I wonder what that feels like to yeah. stick my knob in there. Yeah, I wonder you know? what that would be like. Yeah. Although with you, you could actually get it in the slot that you put the penny stuck. in. Yeah, it wouldn't get stuck. It wouldn't get stuck. No. You'd be in and out. Yeah, yeah. Like the little thin slot. It wouldn't feel like anything. Yeah, not the, not the hole at the bottom. No, no, That no. you put, take the plug out of yeah. the thin Thanks slot. Thanks for, yeah. yeah. Really sure, yeah. Just, just in case. Just, just you, in case those yeah. of them didn't know. The 26 year old told the Sunday Sport when I put it in, it felt funny but nice and it went all big. Hmm? <laughs> That's what usually happens. So he's put it in flaccid. That's what's happened. He's put it in flaccid. And it's gone all big. So that's how he's got it in. And then it's gotten bigger and now it's stuck. Mm. Surely that's going to drop off, though, when he yeah. loses his erection. You'd have thought so. Um, I don't know why, but I had no control of it. You know what it's like. No. No? No. Mm, don't no. know what it's like. <laughs> and, as it, and as it was big, I couldn't get it back out again. Well, it goes down, though. Yeah, it goes yeah. down. I tried pulling it, but it wouldn't budge. Oh, I don't know, though. Because if you put it in and you put it far in, yeah. and then you and it would be tight, potentially. But it would go down. Yeah. But anyway, it's I didn't want to pull it too hard in case it took the end off. <laughs> ah, come on, mate. He's been a bit generous himself there, isn't he? I reckon. I don't know. A bit of fairy I, liquid, mate. I saw a video on YouTube once. Of course he did, because he's looked at videos like that. Yeah. He's where a guy. bloke lost his bell end in a Furby, and I wasn't going to risk it. <laughs> It's like the guy that had uh, popping candy stuck there, didn't he? Remember yeah, him? that was another one. Yeah, brilliant. He, somebody shagged a Furby. You can't on YouTube. One of those. On YouTube, yeah. <laughs> Who's putting that on YouTube? More likes than this video, probably. Probably, probably going probably to see it after this one. Recommended, suggested video. More. Yeah. I, I bet that's got more views than this channel. Maybe we should start doing stuff like that. You can start doing Who that. Who wants to see Dan shag a Furby? <laughs> um, stricken by panic, Steve ran downstairs to his mother. Don't go and tell your mum. Yeah, and also you can tell he lives with his mum. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He was in the kitchen drinking. Probably would do with a son like that. Yeah, I wouldn't blame him. What was she drinking? I'd be drinking. He continued. I said, Mom, Mom, I got me cock stuck in one of the Nat West pigs. Don't tell your mom. What? What? No. What would she say? <laughs> Not again. No. <laughs> she said, which one? <laughs> why is that important? <laughs> <laughs> why is that important? <laughs> Not why have you done it? Yeah. What have you yeah. done? Yeah. Which, which pig was one? it? <laughs> Fucking hell. Was it not which? my favourite one, is it? Yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not the one with all the money in. A <laughs> couple of fives in that one. <laughs> and I said, uh, this one, mum. And she said, as long as it's not the nappy one, because you can get on the register for stuff like that. <laughs> Shut up. No way. What, because it's a baby looking pig? <laughs> you can't get arrested for paedophilia for... Oh, what? my days. The... P- what? <laughs> as long as it's not the one with the nappy on, Steve. Yeah. Because that's the know, problem. That you know, would be the problem. Yeah. 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 That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I w- so the pair tried freeing Steve from the money box with wa- with washing up liquid, but lubrication proved fruitless. I wouldn't be letting my mom lubricate my penis with washing up liquid. <laughs> no. But he is twenty six living at home, and he shoves his penis in in pigs. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said something derogatory then. <laughs> yeah, you could have. I could have. Because like what? I, well. No, I'm not going to say it. It's disrespectful, <laughs> uh, and it's disrespectful to other people. 
Uh, so I'm not going to yep. say what's in my head. Uh, I wanted to sm- uh, I wanted to smash it off, but mum wouldn't let me. Steve went on. She said it was worth a few quid. and I, <laughs> I, <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah, and I might get damaged down below. With a pig-shaped money box bulging through his tracksuit bottoms. Jobless, Steve. Oh, I'm not surprised. He is in the market for a job. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if we know any employers. Uh, Steve caught a bus uh, to the Royal Liverpool Hospital. He Liverpool. caught a bus. Yeah. Um, mm. take take a cab, take a cab taxi. What did he get? How did he get the money out of the piggy bank to pay for it? That's what I want to know. Well, who knows? Stuck. He said it was. I'll get the way back, mate. Is that I get the way back? Yeah, I'll get you. I'll sort you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just crack it's crack <laughs> uh, He said it was funny, really. Well, was not it? really, because when I pulled down my tracky bottoms down to show the nurse, she started laughing, and the pig slid off my cock and smashed on the ground. Didn't Waste happen. a journey. Didn't happen though. That didn't happen though, did it? How, how is that the thing? Lisa. I think the nurse laughing made the hard on go away when I stopped being stuck. Surely getting on the bus makes the hard on go away. Yeah. The, the sheer embarrassment of having to walk in sure, public with it. Surely going downstairs to your mum and her trying <laughs> to get it off with washing up liquid is cause hard. Not the nurse. Uh, not the nurse, yeah. Yeah, poor nurse. It's funny that, isn't it? What does a nurse look like? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, like your mum fondling with your penis. No, yeah, not yeah like that. no, no, that's fine. Hard yeah, on stayed. You, kept his erection. She, used to that. Yeah, yeah. kept his kept yeah, yeah. erection fine. <laughs> Got all the way to the hospital to pull that down. Nurses are like, oh, Jesus Christ. No, it's <laughs> off. So, uh, but when Steve got home, his mother was less than impressed. She went mental, he recalled. Them pigs go for 30 quid on eBay, and that's a lot of cider. Always cider drinkers. Unbelievable, that. Always cider didn't drinkers. Happen. Didn't happen, that. It, it did didn't, it? It didn't happen. I think it did. Didn't, well, they wouldn't lie about it, so <laughs> it it's written. It's written in the Sunday Sport, so, uh, so there you go. That's you know, and he would write into the Sunday Sport, wouldn't he? To tell, yeah. do you know if you would have done that? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. there's only him that would know that. And I reckon, he, that, I reckon he probably got paid thirty quid for that story, yeah. probably as well. The same amount as the his mum made him write it in, I think, to get the thirty quid. So that's. Uh, that's, yeah. that's the funny story. That's, maybe we do those. Maybe we should do those all the time. Maybe but, we do. Um, or maybe we'll do them intermittently so that it so forces them to, them to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good plan. Yeah, I like that plan. Go. Anyway, that's it. That's us signed off. Yeah, like it and that. All that, sh- all that shit. Comment. Yeah. Catch you in a minute. Bye. Bye.